okay, now that we've written out these equations in full, we can see just how nonlinear the equations are. They're full of trigonometric functions, things like products of state uh, variables, squares of, of variables, and all these things are nonlinear. So to make assessing the stability of an aircraft a tractable problem, we need to go into linearize these equations. We do that by assuming steady flight in a trim state. And we call the trim state x naught delta naught. So the definition of the trim state is one for which the time rate of change of the state vector is zero, except for the position rate and the heading rate component because x dot e is just u naught in the earth axis, y dot e is v naught in the earth axis, z dot e is w naught in the earth axis, and the heading angle change rate is just r naught, where r is Earth Z uh, rotate uh, angular velocity component. So what this allows for is both straight flight and steady turns. So we can have straight flight and here are you equal zero. And this can actually include this is not necessarily just steady level flight, this can include climb or descent at a constant rate. We can also have steady turning flight. Where are you not is not zero. So now what we're going to do is consider small perturbations. Delta x, t, and delta, delta t about the trim state. So these are perturbations about the trim state. So that means that x of t is x naught of t, which is the trim state, plus the small perturbation delta x of t and the control vector can be broken down into these two contributing components in the same way. So now from before we had that with this classic state space representation the time rate of change of the state vector is given by some function of the state vector and the control vector. And if we write that for this broken down version, what we get is that x dot naught plus delta x dot equals our function f, whatever it is, of x naught plus of x delta naught. Delta. And this is approximately equal to, and here's where the approximation takes place and requires that the perturbations be small. This is approximately equal to the first terms of a Taylor series expansion about the trim state. So this is f of x naught and delta naught plus 
bf dx at x naught and delta naught times delta x plus df and delta at x naught and delta naught times delta delta. So this is a truncated Taylor series expansion about the trim state. If this was an equal sign instead of an approximately equal to sign, then we would add plus blah 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 and have an infinite number of terms afterwards. But we're not going to do that because we're taking small perturbations so that all those higher order terms become negligibly small. So the trim state is a real state for our system, and so it has to obey the equations of motion. So we can say that x dot naught must satisfy our function which governs the system. So if we subtract this from the Taylor series expansion here, we get the linearized equations of motion for the small perturbations only. So we get delta x dot is a plus x plus b plus delta, where a is this df dx at x naught and delta naught and b is this df Delta and delta. So A and B are called the system Jacobian matrices. And what you can see that these are going to be is it's going to be just a matrix full of partial derivatives. And their value will depend on the specific trim state. Now, let's consider what we call the fixed stick response. Of our aircraft. So this is means what happens if delta delta is zero. So we set our controls for the trim state and then we do not touch them after that. We hold them where they are for the trim state. This gives what we call the natural response. of the aircraft which is used to assess stability. In this case, the general solution of the now linear system of ordinary differential equations for delta x dot uh, is a superposition of eight flight dynamic eigenmodes. So we can write that this way. I'll explain this before the lecture is done today. V to K, E to lambda K, T, where lambda K is sigma K, plus i omega k. Right? So we're going to delve into exactly what this means soon, but here, these are the non-zero eigenvalues, and the vk are the corresponding eigenvectors. of the Jacobian matrix A. 
and y eight. Since the system of equa uh, since our system has twelve equations and uh, twelve states, there ought to be twelve eigenvalues in total, but four of them are going to be zero, and this can be seen from our discussion last time of which of the state variables don't actually appear in the equations governing the dynamics. Basically, these are going to correspond to changes in location and heading. So x e, y e, z e, and phi have no in impact, no influence, on the dynamics. Therefore, we exclude them from the summation and go up to 8 instead of 12. Uh, note that not making there be any dependence on ZE neglects atmospheric property variation over the range of the motion. And usually that's a pretty good assumption if we're considering a single maneuver. Before delving further, let's briefly discuss the idea of eigenvalues.